Hello again. So glad to have you with us here at God's Got a Plan. Well, I believe God's plan tonight is to, let's just say, to touch on an area tonight I believe is so very important because those of us who are in the church and in the body of Christ, we sometimes get lax in our walk and don't realize that we may have gotten a little uh, sidetracked. Uh, my message tonight is Harden Not Your Heart. I'm going to be reading to you tonight from the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, and we're going to start at the seventh verse. But let me open up in a word of prayer. Eternal Father, we just want to thank you just for another day. We thank you, Father God, for just being so real in all of our lives. We now ask you to open up our understanding. Give us insight, Father God. Help us to glean from your word tonight. And Lord God, we'll forever be grateful and thankful for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, now as I said, we're going to be coming out of the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, starting at the 7th verse. And here's what it says. Uh, matter of fact, let me start at the 6th verse. Let me start at the 6th verse. And it says, but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence, hold fast the confidence. So you got to have confidence in God. I believe in Mark eleven twenty two 22, it says, have faith in God. So hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. See, this walk that God has given us, this is a faith walk. And we have to go all the way to the end until God calls us home. Now, getting to our verses of scripture, the seventh verse says, the seventh verse now says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice, Lord Jesus, if you would just hear his voice. You know, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. A stranger we will not entertain. Many of us have. I said out of our mouths that we love the Lord, but our hearts are far away from him. The Lord says, why, why, do, you, uh, why do you say you love me, but not do what I say do? So the eighth verse says, harden not your hearts. See, and I want you to understand now, this message is, is, is being spoken to the church, to the body of Christ. Because we too... Those of us, when I say we, I'm talking about those of us who are in the body of Christ. We, too, can get hardened hearts. We can get somewhat uh, complacent in our Christian walk. And we don't realize that we're walking in an alternate lifestyle or let's say living in an alternate lifestyle, allowing this alternate lifestyle to override the, the good that we would do. God has called us to be a peculiar people. A peculiar people, meaning I'm not supposed to be like those people in the world. I don't act like them. I, I don't respond to the different things that I'm going to uh, going to go through like they did or like I once did at one time before I came to Christ. See, many of us, we really need to take a real good look at where we're at today in our Christian walk. This walk is a journey and it's going to take each day. To come into the knowledge of God. And I'm talking about revelation knowledge. I'm talking about allowing God's word to peel back. To uh, unlock the, the mystery of self. And to unlock this gospel. The Bible says if this gospel be hidden. It is hidden from those of us who were lost. See when you have a hardened heart. You were lost. When you have a hardened heart, see, when we came to Christ, we had a hardened heart, but we've allowed the Lord to massage our heart. I believe in uh, Psalms uh, 51, David said, uh, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. You see, uh, someone with a hardened heart don't have the right spirit. In other words, we don't have the spirit of God working in our life. We have the spirit of the enemy overriding the good that we would do or want to do. There are times I believe Paul says in in Romans, he says, uh, I, when I want to do right, there's something causing me to do those things that I don't want to do. 
And he's asked that question, what is it that's causing me to do these things that I don't want to do? And then he said, it's the sin that is in me. And I'm, 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 I'm challenging you tonight to take an honest look at yourself tonight and, and, and ask yourself, uh, do I have a hardened heart? Am I sensitive to the prompting and the leading of the Holy Spirit? Am I walking in love? Am I walking in love, forgiving those who have erred against me, against you? Because I want you to understand, we, we have to be able to forgive folk. We have to be able to forgive our fellow man and those who are difficult to get along with. See, that's one of the challenges. It's easy to get along with those who are doing what you want them to do. But the challenge is to still keep on hanging in there with that somebody that's not willing or that somebody that's not doing what you might want them to do. Are you still going to be able to have patience with them? Are you going to still be able to love them? Because we can get a hardened heart dealing with difficult people. But this word of God will massage our hearts and Lord create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. See, and it's a challenge. Life, life is not something that we're to, uh, let's just say, take so lightly to think that we can answer all of life's problems and challenges and to think that we are self-sufficient and we can do it all by ourselves for ourselves. This is why the Bible says we're instructed not to lean to our own understanding. You're not to lean to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, you have to acknowledge God. See, when you acknowledge God, he will direct or let me say redirect your path. He will put you on that pathway of righteousness. The Bible says that the word will be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Oh, God doesn't want me to, let's just say, to get to that place in my life where I'm just so hardened by the different things that have come up against me, the different challenges, uh, the different hardships. Uh, it might be sickness you might be dealing with and you've been in it for a long time and you haven't seen a change and now you're kind of difficult to get along with because, you know, you, you're, you're really challenged by this illness or this sickness or this disease. Someone might be struggling with an addiction and, and I'm hard hearted now and I'm cold hearted and I'm insensitive to even the things that I should be sensitive to. And when I say that, I'm talking about, you know, someone that might be in a relationship. You, you're not able to feel the hurt and the pain of another because of what you might be involved in. But I realize that there are so many things coming at us today to, to harden our hearts. And we have to realize we have to take responsibility for the choices that we're making today. Harden not your heart. Look at the 12th verse of that same particular verse and uh, uh, chapter in Hebrews chapter 3. The, the 12th verse says, Take heed, brethren and sisters, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, an evil heart of unbelief. How well, how much do you stand on this word of God? You know, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And if you're going to stand for anything, you really need to stand for God. You need to stand on this word of God and realize that as you work the word, the word works. It will work when you begin to work it. You know, the beautiful thing about the about this Bible is uh, we know that this word is God breathed. And every time you read it, you have the benefit and you have the advantage of the author of the book right there by your side to lead and guide you into all truth. You know, you can go out here to Barnes and Nobles or wherever and you can buy a number of books, self-help books, uh, commentaries, all kind of books written by man. But you don't have the benefit of them sitting with you and helping you to get through that book with an understanding. Well, the Holy Spirit will help you. But when you read this Bible, this is God's word to man, his love letter to man. And you and he's the author of this book and he will. He will bring you into all truth. He will bring you into the knowledge of his word. He wants you to have a deeper understanding. Why? Because he doesn't want you to have to 
fight your way through this life and, and live on the downside and not on the upside. He's trying to bring somebody to a better place tonight. And I want you to understand that when you can examine yourself, when you can look at yourself honestly and realize, yes, I need help. And I realize I'm not able to help myself in that area most needed. I'm talking about in that area of the spirit. In other words, the spirit needs to be fed by the spirit. See, the spirit side of me needs to be fed by the spirit, just like this natural body of mine need to be fed natural food. So I, I, I realize that if junk goes in, junk is going to come out. So what's got to go in? I have to be able to have a relationship with this word. I have to have a relationship with my Lord. I have to realize in that relationship, God is going to instruct me. He's going to his Holy Spirit is going to lead and guide me. And he's going to help me to make those choices. That's going to allow me to be more than a conqueror. Ah, uh, this is your night for a breakthrough. This is your night for a change. Oh, uh, God want to bless you now. And you can be blessed if you would just, let's just say, respond to this clarion call. It's time to come out. It's time to get up. It's time to arise. It's time to go forward. It's time to realize, I love to say this, you are somebody because God didn't make no junk when he made you. D did you hear what I said? I said, you are somebody. You're somebody special to God. You are somebody because God didn't make no junk. And this is why we have to fight this common enemy, because he's trying to put so much junk in the way. And if we can pick up this junk along the way, it will make our journey that much more difficult. But God has given us his word. He's given us his Holy Spirit to help us, to lead us, to guide us, to help us to let go of some of this trouble, some of this hurt, some of this sadness, some of this pain. Oh, I want you to know that this life is truly worth living. And because you're somebody, I want you to know you can make it because, I, oh, my God, with the whole world against me, if God is on my side, I believe the word says that we are more than conquerors. Why are, we, why are you more than a conqueror? Why can you be more than a conqueror tonight? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is after you. Uh, that's one thing I can say about the devil. He's persistent and he's consistent. He's not going to quit. He's not going to give up. Just like when Jesus was going through the wilderness and he went through those three tests, those three challenges and whatnot. And the Bible says that the devil left him for a season. And if the devil will show up at show up to Jesus and try Jesus, what would make you think? You're not going to be tried by the devil. Yes, the devil's going to try you, my brother, my sister. But I want you to understand with a knowledge of God, with some insight in his word and with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can be more than a conqueror. Devil don't have power or authority over you as a believer, as someone who was saved. The devil don't have authority or power over you. I believe in Luke 10, 19, uh, the word says that I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, over all the power of the enemy. What are we saying? The devil has power. And without God, without you operating in the spirit of God, I want you to understand the devil will have more power than you. You only have the power to defeat him and beat him is when you're aligning or realigning your life with God and allowing his Holy Spirit, oh my God, to rest, rule, and abide in your heart. Are you living this life to please God or are you trying to please self? Are you trying to please somebody? We have to be very mindful of who we are living this life for. Why? Because if we're not living it for Jesus. I want you to understand we just might, you just might have a hardened heart. Uh, let me go a little bit further. Look what it says in the 13th verse. Uh, but exhort one another daily while it is called today. Every day is a new day. 
And every day we have to see we're not going to be able to exalt another person or let's just say encourage another until we're encouraged. So we have to be able to see that God want us to be blessed and we can be blessed when we're allowing ourselves to operate in his word. Least any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Through the deceitfulness of sin. The Bible says we are all drawn away by our own lust. There's something operating in us that will draw us away from the good that we would do. That lust, that flesh nature always want to override the spirit. But we have to be able to take control. And we take control when we allow this word of God to, to fill us. See, I, I, I need to be filled with his word. I, the Bible says, hide the word in my heart so I don't sin against God. It didn't say in my mind now. It says in my heart. Why the heart? Because the heart is the seat of your emotions. That's where your, your, your will, your dreams, your hopes, those deep desires of your heart, that's where those things lie. In our mind, we entertain so many things. You know, living in this information age, we're bombarded with so much information that is, you know, coming in our minds. And we have to be able to sift through that information, sift through the news, sift through whatever is coming through this eye gate, this this ear gate. These are gateways. Every opening that we have is a gateway. And that gateway, let's just say, if we don't guard our gateway, the enemy will gain access. We have to be able to make sure you don't get the wrong stuff in your heart. Now, understand this. There's like 18 inches from the mind to the heart. And that's a long 18 inches to try to get that word of God from your mind down into your heart and then to live on it or live by it. God wants us to live by it. Look in Psalms 95. Psalms 95. Psalm 95 in the seventh verse. Here's what the seventh verse of Psalm 95, David says, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture. Talking about the sheep of his pasture. See, we have to come humble and obedient. We have to come. You have to come humble and obedient, leaning not unto your own understanding, but allowing God's Holy Spirit to direct you. Realizing that that hardened heart can keep you from the blessings of God. Oh, and God want to bless you real good tonight. So listen to this. Let me go on. Here's what he says. In the sheep of his hand today, if you will hear his voice. See, if we will just hear his voice. Now, I'm pointing to my ear, but I'm not talking about just hearing him here. We have to hear him down in our hearts. Are you hearing me tonight? We have to hear him down in our heart tonight. We have to be able to receive him and realize that he wants the best for you. He wants the best for you and I. He wants the best for our families. He wants the best for our church. Oh, my God. And we have a lifetime to do this, to develop this relationship with him. But if you're not able to hear from him, oh, it might be because our hearts are hardened. Oh, we have to be able to examine ourselves. Now, look at what the eighth verse says. Harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. And we all have been tried. We've all have been tempted, tested. And we're all going to go through some things in this journey, in this in this walk. I want you to realize this walk is a. Uh, is a walk that you're going to be challenged, you're going to be tried. Why? Because the enemy wants you back. See, those of us who are in Christ, we can say the devil thought he had us or he thought he had you, but you got away. God wants you to get away. Once you are saved, you got away. Why? Because you're covered under the blood. You're covered by grace. His grace abounds. His grace covers us. And I'm thankful tonight. Why? Because someone listening to me tonight, I don't know what you've been dealing with, but you now realize that as bad off as I might have thought I was, I'm not as bad off. Or, I, or you might be thinking that God is nowhere around. Well, I want you to understand he's closer to you than you think, than you might think. 
He is so close. Uh, he says in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, he will be closer than a brother and he will be better than a friend. God is faithful to his word. He is committed to his word. And if we can step into this word of God and begin to walk it, walk it out day by day. Today is the day that the Lord have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. See, uh, see, the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. So if you're dealing with anything today that's got you puzzled and I'm somewhat confused, realize the enemy is trying to gain access. Give no place to the devil. Uh, don't let him rob you of another night's sleep. Don't let him rob you of another day. Don't let him move you out of that place where you have the peace. This joy I have, this joy that God want to give you, uh, don't let the world take it. Don't let the enemy take it. But realize that the Lord has given it to you because he wants you to maximize yourself. He wants you to be able to see yourself living your best life now. Living your best life now. The cemetery is full of some folk who have died leaving their dreams or taking their dreams, taking their hopes and those promises, taking those ideas and those plans right into the grave, right into the ground. So I can say today that the richest place on the planet is not the stock market on, on, Wall, on Wall Street, not the oil wells in, in, in Iran or Kuwait, is not the diamond mines in South Africa. The richest place on the planet is your neighborhood cemetery. Because there are books that haven't been written, songs that haven't been sung, and businesses that haven't been started by men and women just like you, who have put off for tomorrow what you should be doing today. Uh, examine yourself. Acknowledge that I could be at a bad place tonight, and even though I'm thinking that everything is good, because, you know, sometimes we can have this false sense of security thinking that everything is good because I have a little money in the bank and because uh, I got a nice home I'm living in, I'm in a good area code, zip code, driving a fancy car, so on and so forth. And I may have hardened my heart against this gospel because life is good in my eyes, but maybe I have turned away from the God who has blessed me. So I, I want you to understand this message is not just trying to bring those who are out of the body of Christ. This message is also also for those of us who are in the body of Christ. God wants us. He wants you, my brother. He wants you, my sister. He wants you to come on line with his word. He wants you to realign your life and examine yourself and realize that your heart might not be is pure or as sanctified as you might think it is. You know, many of us in the church like to say, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me give you a little clue. Yes, we're saved, but we're being sanctified every day because every day we're going to be challenged by something that's going to cause us to be sanctified. And every day we're coming just a little bit closer to Jesus. And every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord. If you don't know Christ today, you need to come into fellowship and relationship with him. Let me offer up a prayer to those of you watching the program tonight. Dear Father, we just thank you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we just might have a hardened heart. And Lord, if we're watching this program and Lord God, if we've fallen by the wayside, I'm asking you, Father God, please forgive us of our sin, all of our unrighteousness. Those that might not be saved have not entered into the body of Christ. I pray that you would forgive them. I pray that you would bring them into the body of Christ. I pray, Father God, that you will bless us, Lord God, continue to bless us with your grace. May your love, oh, Father God, override every hurt, every sadness, every pain, those who might be sick in their bodies, I pray, Father God, that you will touch that infirm body, whether it's diabetes, multiple sclerosis. I pray, Father God, a healing of a liver. I'm praying right now for healing in the back. I'm believing you right now, Father God, that you're going to you're going to regulate a mind 
And Father God, do what only you can do. And Father, we'll forever be grateful and thankful. And if you have been touched tonight by this word, if this word have touched you in any way, I pray that you will just contact us. Let us know that you received the word uh, in that prayer. If you were healed and somebody out there were healed tonight, if you can stand on that word of faith, if you can believe it, you can receive it. I believe that whatever the abnormality is or was, I should say, by his stripes, you were healed. You are more than a conqueror. Don't let that hardened heart separate you any longer from the God who loves you. We here at God's Got a Plan, we love you and we want the best for you. And we're believing that you're going to return next week and watch us again because we want to take you just a little bit higher each week, a little bit higher and a little bit higher. We love you now. Keep doing what you're doing and know that God's got a plan and his plan is always better than your plan. We love you now. God bless you. Have yourself a good night. Praise God. Thank you.